Hey there, this is Vanessa DeBerlay and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about how you can build a brand for yourself or establish a brand. It's really, it can be really overwhelming, especially when you're brand new in any business, trying to figure out what it is you want to be, <laughs> what you want to do, and how to pull it all together. If you notice, there are people who have been out there a long time. They've really established who they are. They've got a message and, and they, they've really, um, have established their brand and that's what this is about what I'm going to give you today are five simple steps that you can start taking that will help you to start establishing your brand it's not something that many of us do overnight you kind of grow with it and but as you start getting these pieces and putting them together you'll just become stronger and stronger so let's go ahead and get started with five simple steps that you can start today that will help you to start to establish your brand now, establishing your brand in a nutshell means people recognize you. It's what they'll say about you. Like so-and-so is, is known for such and such, right? So that's your brand. Um, you, you, you become what people see you as. And one of the first things you need to do is get out there and be seen, correct? And a lot of people will ask this question, all right? I know I need to get out there and be seen, and I know I need to do it on social media, but which platform or should I be on all the platforms? Now, if you're like me, <laughs> when you first started out, I was trying to be on all of them at once. So that's why I do have many accounts because I was literally in the beginning trying to be everywhere at once and I wasn't getting anywhere, to be honest. It wasn't until I discovered YouTube and I made a commitment that I was going to commit my social media time on YouTube and it turned out that this is the one I love the most I really enjoy it I remember when I was trying to be everything to everyone and be all over the place I wasn't enjoying it it was actually extremely frustrating ex extremely daunting to be honest because you you never become a master at anything you're just trying to get out there and throw things um, when you pick your one social media platform pick something that you enjoy watching yourself so if you really love Instagram you've always got your phone in your hand and you like communicating then use Instagram obviously you love the platform you enjoy using it so you're going to enjoy posting on it if you enjoy um, audio podcast maybe you should start a podcast and if you like making videos then YouTube is actually a great choice as well um, a lot of people are afraid to start using YouTube YouTube because they are afraid to make a video um, to be honest maybe the first time can be really scary but after that it becomes really easy I enjoy YouTube uh, my background is a teacher and I just like that um, venue is is being able to um, I can't see you but you can see me but I feel like I'm talking to you so to me that's easier than writing and doing some of those other things but you might say well what about those big gurus that are out there they have podcasts and Instagram accounts and all that they do but they built it up slowly or quickly with help but master one get that one really uh, stable make sure you understand it then you can start adding another one and that's because that's where you're going to build your content on that one main platform and then you're going to learn how to use that one piece of content on a another platform you can recycle old content and things like that but what I advise you is pick one and stick with it and how long you stick with it is up to you like I said I picked YouTube I made a one-year commitment I was gonna make so many videos and my my goals you know I, I stuck to them whatever my goals were that I had written down so you need to write those down and pick one and then stick with it number two you want to niche down and be known for something. And what do I mean by that? Well, I just told you earlier that part of building a brand is people know you for something. Um, I can name Nick Nimmons or Daryl Eve. They're both known for YouTube. They both teach on all about YouTube. Um, if you say their name, many YouTubers will know who they are right away because that's where their um, heart is. That's where all of their content is. So you need to pick a niche and bring it down and what i mean by that let's say that you want to do health and fitness which is a wonderful niche it's something that people will be looking for forever but you can't just say i'm a health and fitness site because it doesn't really make you stand out from the crowd so you might say i'm going to um, target um, an audience of women over 50 and that really narrows it down it really knocks a lot of people out but that's okay because 
women over 50 are going to look for you for for those tips and exercises and whatever you're offering but the more you narrow it down then people are going to know you for that i just found a video the other day from a woman her videos were called flipping 50 and i thought wow how clever and that's who she's targeting people who are over 50 and she's got a real catchy name for her youtube channel as well so you want to make sure that you become known for something so Focus on your one area and then niche it down as much as you can. Now, you may find that you might start out in a certain area. Maybe you want to teach all about YouTube um, and how to start a channel and things like that. But maybe you want to eventually be known for um, what kind of equipment to use. You, you can look now on YouTube. There are certain channels that that's all they talk about is what kind of equipment. Um, you'll see other people that will talk about editing a lot. Um, that has become their expertise. So you can really narrow down in any niche. Now, one thing I want you to be careful about. And especially if you love knowledge and you have lots of knowledge, sometimes we can get off on tangents and start teaching about everything. And the thing that's going to happen is, let's say uh, on one, we're going to use YouTube because that's where we're at. But maybe on one video, let's say I teach you all about affiliate marketing. That's my niche, um, affiliate marketing okay and then on the next one i might maybe i have a mini farm at my house and maybe on the next one i start talking to you about goats and how to um cut their toenails or their hooves and trim their hooves um those are two totally different things yes they're part of me and my life but for you as a viewer if you come to me wanting to learn about affiliate marketing and then all of a sudden i'm showing you how to trim the hooves of a goat that's going to be weird you're going to go well that's not what i came here for and vice versa if you came looking for goats and you've got affiliate marketing so it's really going to hurt you because you're going to lose part of your audience if if you're that passionate about two different things or three different things maybe down the road you can start another channel but i wouldn't recommend doing it all at once but stick with your content stick all stay on the lane don't go wandering off okay you can share things like that you you know i just told you i have goats okay but that's not what my channel's about you're not going to come to my channel to learn about a mini farm or a goat you're going to come and learn about affiliate marketing and how to make money online and things like that so what you want to do in on your platform is educate people about what who you are and what you are um, when you educate you want to give value and um, if i teach you something i want you to walk away and say wow you know i learned something from her and i want to come back and learn some more and that's what giving value is all about so that's number two let's go to number number three was crazy for me when i first started i kept thinking it's share your content with other people and interact and i kept thinking why why do people keep, keep giving around giving away all this information for free and then some of those people would have courses and i'm like but they're giving it away for free and really that is why people will flock to you they they want to um, you have content you have content that is valuable and you can interact with other people this is what's going to help you build relationships let's say that you have a lot of knowledge about um cooking keto uh, keto style cooking okay and that's what your channel is all about is how to eat a keto diet and it's very popular it would be a good channel to have and to help build your audience and interact you might go out and search for people that are looking for that um, your target art audience so you might go through some facebook groups and become a member and while you're in there you will find people asking questions and that's where you start making yourself relevant you might go in and say hey i just made a video about the the very question that you asked would it be okay if i send it to you and the person says sure so it starts helping other people to see you more as an expert how you can also do that by going to other channels that are similar to yours. so your keto recipes keto cooking keto lifestyle find other channels don't compete with them but try to interact with them and, and mesh with them they some of those channels have gotten so big they're going to have tons and tons and tons and tons of comments i sometimes when i'm just um looking for other channels that are similar to mine that are huge they'll have so many comments in there that they've never gotten back and responded to you could go in there and respond to those and answer some of those questions and then people will start to see you as an expert in that field and just do it naturally you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours surfing the net and looking for these things i pretty much have my list of different 
um, channels that I like to follow, Facebook groups, and then I just go in occasionally or maybe daily. I might allow just a few minutes a day and go in and just kind of check things out and make myself pr um, a presence of myself, if that makes sense. So that's number three. Let's go to number four. Number four is something that I have just started to do, but I want to share it with you. You want to be proactive and really hustle and pitch yourself to get known again as an expert. Now, how do you do this? You want to become part of the community. So I was just talking about Nick Nimmons, Carol, Carl, Daryl Eves. They're two people that are really known in the YouTube community. Um, they're way up there. They've got thousands of followers, but what about other people that might be in that YouTube community that are just starting out. If you search, you'll find them. I'm using this as an example. Um, one of the things that you can do is find somebody else that's in your niche, that's at your level, and then ask them, say, hey, do you want to interview each other? I have a new channel, you have a new channel, we complement each other. Can I interview you and make a video and put you on my channel and then you interview me? And People who have been around a long time that don't, quote, need um, the exposure and the relationships and the interaction, I'm sure they get to a point where they're like, I've had enough. I don't need any more friends, right? You've gotten that way in your life, I'm sure. But go find those new people that are just like you or a couple steps ahead of you, a couple steps below, and help each other. And then one even though they might have a small audience and you don't really get a lot out of it, maybe you don't give them a lot, but one thing both of you are doing for each other is giving each other some experience. And another thing both of you have gained is now when you go to another person and say, hey, will you interview me on your podcast? I'll interview you on my podcast. You can say, I was just um, interviewed by such and such, uh, so and so, you know, last week. And this is the content that I provided on their channel. And that person could go listen to it and say, hey, I really like, 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 um, so-and-so, and I'm going to go ahead and interview them as well. So you, you want to start establishing yourself. It takes time. You might have a lot of people slam that door in your face and tell you no, but keep doing it because that is how you build a community of people, of your peers that are doing the same thing that you're doing. You want to interact with each other, not compete with each other. So that's number four, very important. Number five was very, very, very difficult for me in the beginning because being of a teacher background, I always felt like I couldn't teach somebody something else unless I was an expert first. So I didn't claim it. And that's number five. Claim what you are. Just become it. Even though deep down in your heart, you're like, I'm not really an expert yet. You're an expert as much as you can be an expert. So you're not lying. You're an expert for where you're at. And I do remember the first time that I walked into a classroom when I was teaching. I remember I went to college. I had my degree. I, I was a teacher all my life. I just knew that that was what I wanted to do. But I'll never forget that first day that I walked in the classroom and I thought, what am I doing? And I thought, I don't, you know, they're not going to see me as a teacher. And I just had a talk with myself and I said, be it. Be a teacher pretend, you know, become it, claim it. And it wasn't that I had to pretend, but I had to claim what I was and I just did it. And I didn't worry about what the students thought. Now, I know that's a little bit different than going on a podcast or a YouTube video or something like that, but there comes a point where you just have to be what you say you are. So if you say that I am a Pinterest expert then become a Pinterest expert. And here's the deal. If people ask you questions within your expertise and you don't have the answers, won't you go find them? So it's just gonna keep making you more and more of an expert. You really don't want people to ask you only questions that you know the answers to because it's not gonna help you grow. So remember that you never wanna know it all. You always wanna be growing and your expertise will keep growing. But once you claim that you're a keto lifestyle expert, then be it and claim it and say it with confidence and we call that with posture, become it and be it, all right? Because that's probably one of the hardest things. But remember, you're an expert where you're at and you're gonna keep growing 
and growing and growing in your expertiseism. How's that for a word? All right, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. So much more can go into branding. I know people talk about logos and colors and all those other things, but these are things you can do now while you're trying to establish yourself and figure out who you are. That happens with everybody um, that sometimes you know you want this business but you're not quite sure how you're going to do it because you're new and you're not really sure how to do it so those are five things that you can be working on that are going to help you grow and establish yourself and establish your brand your personal brand in front of everybody else you have a good one thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you later